has been getting a lot of requests to go over the gruesome injury we saw tonight. UFC 261 occurred to Chris Weidman in his fight versus Uriah Hall. We see Chris Weidman throw a kick that lands underneath the knee of Uriah Hall. Unfortunately, snaps his leg in half Im immediately. And so what are, we, what are we watching when we see that injury occur? So I'm, I'm gonna grab a model. Let's go over the structural anatomy and understand this together. So if we look at this model here, this is a model of the knee, but what's important here are the bones that are below the knee, the tibia, which is the large weight-bearing bone, and a smaller bone on the outside called the fibula, which is not very crucial in weight-bearing. So the, the, bone, uh, the bone that we wanna focus here is the tibia. So when we see that leg basically go to rubber and no longer have any structural ability to weight-bear, for sure this tibia has been fractured, and it was likely lower than where this model ends here. But for the purposes, the tibia bone was fractured in, in Chris Weidman, okay? And so at, when that happens, this, this leg is no longer able to hold any weight, and obviously the bone, uh, the bone was fractured. The fight was immediately called off. Chris Weidman was, was in a, you know, agonizing pain. And so the next steps are, you know, he was obviously taken off uh, the octagon and he's gonna be rushed to the hospital. There, you know, what we do as orthopedic surgeons is First of all, we wanna make any bone that is structurally you know, crooked or not in alignment, we wanna immediately align the bone. And that's gonna relieve the tension on the neurovascular structures, and it's gonna help Chris Weidman with his pain, okay? They're gonna be getting x-rays, and likely we're gonna, again, be seeing that tibia fracture and, and likely a, possibly a fracture to that fibula outer bone as well. The next step is, un unfortunately, is gonna be pretty, pretty sure is gonna be surgery, okay? And the way that we treat these tibia fractures is we place an intramedullary rod. And what that basically is, is a nail that enters from the top of the tibia that goes across the entire, that spans across the entire tibia, and then we lock it in place with screws. And that now is holding the, the alignment and structural integrity of the tibia from the inside out. So it's almost like a shish kebab that goes within the bone. The bones are actually hollow, so they're not like, solid bone they're actually um they're actually hollow on the inside and, and because that's where our body makes its bone marrow so um what we do is from a surgical standpoint what we're going to do as orthopedic surgeons is obviously he's going to get the proper anesthesia and this is this is something that is not going to have to necessarily be done the night of the injury as long as there's no open injuries or open fractures that's where the bone would be sticking out of the skin as long as they're able to align his bone and get him under adequate pain, sometimes we'll even send the athlete back to their home state so they can get their home orthopedic surgeon to, to, to do this, okay? okay? But from a surgical standpoint, when we do do the operation, here's how we do it. We make it, the patient's asleep, we make an incision in this patellar tendon and we split it open. And what that does is now allows us access into the knee joint. So. What we do is we make a hole in the proper uh, uh, anatomical position and we start enlarging that hole so we can basically place a rod from the top of the knee down that crosses across the entire tibia. And that's an intramedullary rod. And then we'll place screws that go from the outside of the bone within the rod to the other side of the bone. And now that locks the rod in place and allows it to not rot be un rotationally unstable. And the good news about this is usually with this type of fracture pattern, after we put that intramedullary rod in, the bone is gonna be pretty stable because it has a very you know, solid structure on the inside of it. So it's now no longer gonna be floppy. And so the good news about this is usually when we're doing physical therapy, we'll allow them to start weight bearing on it immediately and start doing physical therapy aggressively. So. Hopefully there's no open injuries, um, and hopefully there was no neurovascular injuries either. But aligning that bone immediately after we see the fracture and putting it in a straight position, that helps prevent those neurovascular injuries. So unfortunately for Chris Weidman, you know, most likely he is looking at an operation, um, and that will involve an intramedullary nail. After that, we're looking at physical therapy, Hopefully it's a, it's a structurally stable one where we can start putting weight bearing on it immediately, but unfortunately this is gonna be several, several months of physical therapy. 
Um, that's, that's basically what we were seeing when we, when we see that bone fracture and when we see that leg go floppy, we, for sure you can, you can bank on it. It's a tibia fracture, most likely a fibula fracture as well. We need to stabilize that tibia fracture. We do that with an intramedullary rod. So that's what happened tonight. Chris Weidman, UFC 261 versus Uriah Hall. If you enjoyed these types of videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys here next time. All the best to Chris Weidman.